Hello guys and welcome back to another CG Sparky tutorial. Today we're going to be going over retopology and baking for our Overwatch styled pillar. I'm going to be using Topogun uh, for my retopology, however any program you're comfortable using can be used uh, and I'll be using Substance Painter to do all the baking. Okay, so starting off where we left off in ZBrush, uh, you can see at the top here that I'm sitting on 19 million polygons. Uh, which obviously is not ideal. So we want to get this down to a game ready model. So you can see I've still got all my separate subtools here on the right hand side and we're going to use a term called exploding. Um, this is so that when we bake down the details we get rid of any unwanted artifacts appearing on the maps where the meshes intersect. Uh, you'll see a lot of character artists use this technique to split off like clothes and objects so that you can still get all the information on the maps underneath the clothes. Uh, so basically to do this, um, I'm going to go on to move and go through every subtool and just move it out the way of each other so that no two models intersect. Okay, so as you can see, all the models are split up into a separate area and nothing is intersecting. So I'm now going to uh, decimate all of these uh, as we're sitting at 19 million polygons uh, and that's going to be quite intense uh, for other programs such as Topogun. So I've got it up here, but you can find decimate by going up to Z plugin, decimation master. Here we go. So I'll keep all the settings exactly how they are. Um, and you want to go through every single one of your subtools, one at a time, and go on pre process current. And once that is processed, give it a few minutes, it's quite intense on the system. And um, you then click down onto decimate current. Now, I've had bad experiences using pre-process all and decimate all. Uh, it's crashed ZBrush several times, so I'd recommend making a save now, um, just in case it does crash. Okay, so after decimating, you can see that my total points are now down to 3.8 million, and no detail has been lost on the mesh whatsoever either. So, now, you want to merge all your subtools down into one subtool. Uh, this can be found in the right hand side. Probably in the merge. So I always click always OK because you don't want this popping up every time. And you want to merge all these down into one. Now you want to export them out uh, and jump into whatever program you want to use for retopology. Okay, so jumping into Topogun, you want to click up here uh, on load reference model and load in the high poly model. So this isn't so much a tutorial for a Topogun, um, however, I'll show you a few of the tools that I use. So by right clicking, it brings up your draw crosshair. So you can draw out your polygons and by holding control it highlights uh, certain vertices and it will close uh, the polygon and by holding shift you can create vertices within edges. Uh, also the last sort of tool I should probably show you is the bridge tool here on the right so by selecting two points you can click on bridge and it will close it up. There's also the bridge tool here on the left, however it can be a bit pernickety um, from time to time. So I'm going to show you how to retopologize uh, one of these blocks uh, as the same technique can be used across all of these. So I'm going to start off with one of the corners um, and I tend to you want to keep it all as polygons rather than triangles and you kind of want to roughly get these edges here. So 
from here, you go straight down the edge to where your next polygon will start. Now, because we've exploded out the mesh, the point of origin is directly in the center. So you'll want to just click on one of the vertices you're working on and click on frame selected. This means that your point of origin and your rotation will be the bit you're working on uh, and it'll just be a lot easier to spin around your model. So I wanna put in the polygon in the corner here as well. Maybe bring this down a little bit just to get the average between these kind of two points here. Now you can see here, this kind of goes up slightly. So you want to kind of try get the average of it. Um, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, you'll find that uh, from the bacon and as well as when you're texturing, a lot of this can be painted out and isn't noticed uh, unless you get up really, really close. Um, I mean, if you can add in more points if you want, but we're trying to keep this very low poly. Um, so it's up to you if you if your budget allows for more polygons, but for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm going to keep it as low as possible. Badge there. You can see here there's a massive gap, so you'll just want to bring this up, kind of get a little bit of the average. Same down here. You want to kind of drag it across just to get nicer shapes okay so once you've got all the edges in you'll notice the top and bottom um aren't full polygons like the sides uh, you've got some extra points here so there's two ways you can do it um, I tend to go for this version close it up like that however you may want to go like this this keeps it as polygons too uh, but I'm going to stick with this version as I feel it might help with the unwrap a little bit And there you go. So if you hide reference up at the top right, you can see the shape here, which looks pretty close to the reference here. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably speed the video up here and finish off the rest uh, of these blocks and bring the video back when I'm done.
Okay, so now you can see uh, they're all retopologized and we're sitting at about 270 faces, which I'd say is pretty good considering we've dropped it from what, 5 million uh, when it's decimated, 18 million when it wasn't. So from here, you want to go and file, save as, and make sure you save it as an OBJ. Um, and next stage is to unwrap. So I'm not gonna be able to give advice on unwrapping because I'm not particularly good. However, I will show you the result of my unwrap um, and then we'll move on to baking. Okay, so looking at 3ds Max, uh, I'll show you my unwrap. Uh, this is what I've got it down to here. So basically to get this, I went into matting, uh, mapping and flatten mapping and I just welded the edges together to make these uh, unwrapped kind of dice box shapes. Uh, and you can see with the checker map, uh, all the boxes are the same size. Um, so now we'll take the unwrapped version and the high poly version and stick it into Substance Painter to bake. Okay, so now that we have finished unwrapping uh, all of the blocks of a pillar, we can open up Substance Painter, click on new. I'm going to set the document resolution to 1024 um, and you want to find your unwrapped export, load that up, here we go, I'm just going to turn off the environment opacity, okay so here are our unwrapped blocks, you want to go up to your texture set settings, click on bake textures and you want to load in to your high poly parameters your high poly mesh. So this will be exactly the same mesh that you opened up in Topogun or your retopology program. Um, I've got mine in from ZBrush. That will be the decimated version. Now I tend to keep all the settings the same apart from the output size. I want to set that to 1024 as well and then just click on bake textures. Now you can already see that this is looking pretty good so far. Yeah, if you spin the light around, have you spin around, you can see that everything looks like it's baked really well. All the edge details have come in. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. So from here, uh, you can go back into uh, 3ds Max and or Maya or whatever your selected program is, and you can just piece back together your. Uh, your pillar. So you want to select elements and detach from all from each other and just slide them back into place uh, to make up the pillar. Okay, so I've just stuck the uh, re merged together model into Marmoset Toolbag just for a quick render and I also exported out the maps uh, we just baked in Substance Painter. Uh, just to give a quick look at how it looks. So I'm going to load up those maps just now. Here's our normal map. We don't have an albedo. We have occlusion. I made occlusion. Do we have cavity? Oh, no, that was curvature. Yeah. Here you go. You can see all those details have carried across really well. Um, you can quickly put on a kind of more greyish yellow stone colour. And that's it for the retopology and baking tutorial. Uh, I hope it was useful and thanks for watching.